Good morning. Uh, it's got to be Venus. You can just see it. <laughs> Follow thou thy star, and thou shalt not fail of a glorious haven, or oh, so it is said. Well, now. <laughs> yeah. It's virtually dark, night time, and yet <laughs> machines <laughs> pick up, it looks as light as day. Very clever little machine. Well, my star led me to St. Michael's Square, number 26, St. Michael's Square, Annick, Northumbria. the which I'm currently denied access to, evicted, effectively homeless. Well, it never bothered me in the past. Actually, if anything, I rather enjoyed my old life, being a pilgrim out Rome, Ireland, and so on. But old Anno Domini has, is beginning to catch up with me, I'm afraid. No one's had it. <clears throat> I, my body is not what it was, basically. Right, so, where does that leave me? Screaming, because I'm being raped by the situation, by the attitude of the police. At the very least, they have utterly failed in their public duty, and at the worst, I'm afraid they might be involved in some manner. with the drug stealing on that square, which would be pretty horrendous. The only evidence, or what makes me think that, is I simply can't believe they did nothing. And now I am the guilty accused, <laughs> and quite frankly, it doesn't matter what anyone says, but. I am getting it in the neck for doing nothing wrong, for being the victim, from being the person harassed by those neighbours. 666 on my doorstep. That's wicked. That's the devil's number. And it was perfectly obvious who did it. The neighbours, because there's all the same pink chalk where the little children were playing. So I'm sorry, Mr. Policeman, who I had to do another 999 call. And no one seems to notice this. All they want to focus on is one little phrase I used. Not a particularly savoury phrase, but <clears throat> if I had any intention to do these people down what, what why why would i want to do that it's just unbelievable unthinkable and here i am <sighs> casting around for for my survival basically yes i suppose i could get a loan but i don't want to go into debt sleep out on the porch of the baptist church I can't say that that has particular attraction for me any longer. 
I was building my own, I want to be building my own life and my own place for heaven's sake, not sleeping on the sodding porch of a Baptist church with my life on hold because of all this absolute codswallop. Damn it. It's just dawn, up as usual. The mewing of those seagulls is beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it's sort of musical to me anyway. There we go. It's dawn. Dawn dawning. But really, this machine makes it look so... Uh, light. Extraordinary. All my films. Three and a half thousand films, for heaven's sake. I'm inclined to take a screenshot of them all, every single title, all 3,500 plus films, and then get a printout, page by page by page by page. It'll be a stonky great book. <laughs> that is my life's work, for heaven's sake. What good may it do me? And I stand accused of, of racially aggravated section four for one little phrase. Yes, I'm a big chap. Yes, I've got a big staff. I've got the little one now, actually, but there we go. Oh, Lord, here we go. Hopefully I'll be able to get in. <sighs> God in Emil. That was actually partly just to cool cool down. It's day one, as they say in Scotland. It really is extraordinary how well this machine picks up in poor lighting conditions. It really is not as bright as this thing's making it look at all. Well, to no problem is there not a solution. To coin a phrase with a double negative. Very bad. <laughs> the government seems to be rushing around like a headless chicken. I mean, quite frankly, that I believe they're now married. The Prime Minister's enamorata. <clears throat> Seems like a bit of a poisonous witch. <laughs> Wanting to sack everyone, according to a certain Mr. Cummings. Ooh. They're a right old shower. Dysfunctional. Quite frankly. Is that the right word? I've tried all the other English-speaking countries. I wish I could find good words to say of my own country. I just caught myself watching, I used to admire this man called uh, Dr. Edward Adrian Wilson so much. He was one of the five men who died coming back from the South Pole with Scott of the Antarctic. And I used to chill with the Scott Polar Research Institute in, uh, on Lensfield Road um, in uh, Cambridge. They still have the bells because it's sort of naval. Um, obviously, Scott, well, Scott was a Navy chap anyway. Um, and I just found a film popped up about Antarctic exploration. Oh, they made a mess of it. Um, I hadn't really seen it in that light so much. I mean, I, I grew up admiring those men hugely. Wilson was only 39 when he died. Scott's wife going out, they go out to New Zealand um, as a staging post before going um, onto the Antarctic 
and I went to a sort of reenactment with, I'm sure his name was Fuchs, uh, who was our the sort of most renowned uh, explorer, and this opposite the Scott Polar Research Institute is, um, pretty sure it's the chemistry building, but it's a big lecture theatre there anyway. And it was a sort of reenactment of uh, parts and reading from the journals and this sort of thing. Uh, of course, Amundsen got there first on the ship called the Fram, so I sort of know a bit about the Scott Polar Research Institute and the chaps who go to the South Pole, chapesses for that matter, men and women, but it tended to be men in those days. They, they call it the Great Age of Polar Exploration or something. Um, but Scott's wife, Kathleen, was going out on the ship and one of the naval ratings was uh, uh, tasked with <coughs> keeping an eye on her and later on <laughs> told to her that actually <laughs> they were very concerned she might just jump overboard. Kathleen is her name. Handsome woman. Wilson was married too. Just can't picture his wife, but I'm sure she would have been a beautiful lady because he was a beautiful spirit, Wilson. Nature lover. Found a book, a biography of his, amongst sort of family books we used to have quite a, a wide selection of books at home, old family books and so on. And here I am at 64 years old, facing what I find is the most horrendous, nonsensical, utterly spirit-harming accusations. I couldn't thwack a child. So what if I'm a big bloke? That doesn't mean I go around thwacking children. My staff is to rest my head on. My poor old head. To comfort me, like a child with its num num, quite frankly. From Psalm 23, thy rod and thy staff shall comfort thee still. Yeah, well, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, and I will fear none evil. Ho, ho, ho. I don't know where this is leading. Nowhere, really. Follow thou thy star, and that shall not fail of a glorious haven, well, there we are. <sighs> love God, love your neighbour as yourself, the two commandments, that's it. So, I'm going to another day of life, seemingly. It's getting warm in here already. Hmm? Amazing, I thought that cooled down. I haven't really got a closing shot in this room. <laughs> Nothing worth focusing on. Staff.